This week on TGC News, Savage gets bought out, Noveski gets invaded, and a new 60-round AR mag. TacPack is an enthusiast subscription service that is focused on bringing you stuff you need straight to your door on a monthly basis. Every month is different, and you can be met with gun parts, accessories, cleaning gear, or even some bigger and cooler shenanigans. And because you're watching TGC, if you use the code TGC Knife, you'll get a free folding knife, TGC Tool, and you'll get a free pocket size multi tool. And TGC Grip will get you a free AR grip. Only when you punch those in over at TacPack. Com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. A couple of things I want to talk about before we get steamrolling today. First, I've noticed a bunch of folks that have had their entire YouTube gun channels demonetized and are therefore struggling with how to move forward. If you are one of those people and you think you are up to the task, I'm inviting you to do reviews for TGC and actually get paid for it. If you're interested, send me an email and let me know. Also, I'm excited to announce that I, yes, me, myself, I will be speaking at this year's NSSF CMO or Chief Marketing Officer Summit in September down in Georgia. I'm Really excited about the opportunity to be able to reach folks in the gun industry that make decisions. And I wouldn't be in this position without you guys. So thank you for giving a damn about TGC. We've got a lot of stuff to cover this week, so we are going to blast through these rapid fire style. First up, Ruger has made it back into the news by expanding on two of their product lines. They've added a new version of their AR-556 pistol, which is chambered in 300 blackout. Since we've never covered that pistol here on the show, I'll give you guys a quick overview. The 5.56 and the 300 Blackout version are virtually identical. From back to front, they come with an SB Tactical SBA3 brace, a forged receiver set capped off with Ruger's own pistol grip, and they come with one metal mag. And then up front, you have a 10 and a half inch barrel and a nine inch handguard with M-lock slots on the sides and bottom, and then pick rail on top. The main differences between the two, besides the chamberings, of course, are the gas systems. The Blackout has a pistol length gas system, and the 5.56 appears to be a carbine length. Other than that, the Blackout comes with a thread protector instead of a flash hider. MSRP on the 5.56 is $899, and the Blackout can be had for $949. On top of that, Ruger has also announced a new camoed up version of the American Rimfire. The main differences here are the bronze Cerakote on the barreled action and a go wild camo on the stock. Otherwise, it's the same as the other American Rimfires. The reason I even mention this is simply because I think it looks great and it would be a great entry-level plinker, which is a question I get from time to time. Now, there is no pricing yet on those, but I suspect we'll see that around 550, maybe 600 bucks when it hits the market. Next up, Nevesky has dropped a new AR-style 9 mil called the Space Invader. Not to be confused with their wonderfully named Ghetto Blaster that they released a while back, the Space Invader comes with its own goofy promo video that's hopefully been playing over one of my shoulders as I'm talking to you guys. The specs are fairly simple. Out back, you have a PDW-style brace mounted to their billet receivers, specific to the PDW-style brace, and that has a paddle mag release for the Colt mags that it takes. They also come with a Magpul MOEK grip, a Geisley MCX SSA, yes, an MCX trigger in this, a Geisley airborne charging handle, a handguard with M-lock on the sides and pick rail on the top and bottom, and then an eight and a half inch barrel with integrated three lug mount for your favorite silencer. All in all, it's pretty fancy, and the price tag reflects that at $2,550. Noveski is one of those brands that doesn't really seem to fit into any one category besides their own. They make some really nice stuff, and they are not afraid to charge for it. American Tactical has partnered with a company called Schmeisser out of Germany to bring a new challenger to the 60-round AR mag category. 
Unlike the pricey Surefire 60 rounder, this one is made from fiber reinforced polymer, but generally speaking, it looks very, very similar to the Surefire. The top of the mag resembles a standard AR mag and then balloons out to accept the influx of ordnance you're intended to shove in there. They brag about being able to take it apart and clean it easily, but I feel like no one actually takes their AR mags apart to clean, ever. Well, actually... So that's a bit unrealistic to brag about. They also brag about it running well with high pressure ammo and suppressors, which if that's true, is a very good thing. The MSRP on those is 70 bucks, which is a little over half of the Surefire mag pricing. So if it's any good, it might be a decent option. Moving along, Glock is back in the news because they're lazy. The 48 and 43X are gonna be released soon with black slides. Woo. Woo, 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 woo. Beyond that, June background check numbers are in and they are up. According to the latest FBI reporting on the topic, June 2019 had the highest recorded number of background checks in the entire history of the background check system for the month of June. In large part, the numbers have been climbing since the early 2000s, and last year we had a staggering 1.93 million checks. This year, how about over 376,000 more than last year? Now, of course, this is not an accurate count of all the gun sales in the country because you have private sales, states that don't use the NICS background check every time, and things like that, but holy crap, that is a positive number. Interestingly enough, though, I don't think we have yet to recover from the Trump slump. And speaking of companies that are adjusting, Savage Arms is no longer under the Vista Outdoor umbrella of brands. We talked about them being for sale before, and it's come to fruition finally. Although the outcome is not what I expected. Instead of some other Umbrella Corp coming along and running the brand into the ground, <coughs> Freedom Group, an investment group led by the current president and CEO of Savage, Al Casper, has bought out the brand sort of from within. In a press release, Casper thanked Vista for their help over the last six years and said, Savage is an extremely strong brand and in great position to keep charging forward. The momentum gained under Vista Outdoor will propel us in future success. It is business as usual, and Savage is excited to continue building on existing relationships within the firearms industry. The possibilities are there. Imagine if they did a really cool handgun or something like that. It'd be awesome. And we shall see where the future takes them. Have you ever tried to put a gun together with this or these? Or maybe this, or maybe even this? <laughs> Maybe it's time to consider getting some schooling from Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI offers courses from some of the best and brightest the gun industry has to offer. From gunsmithing to reloading to full-on associate's degrees in firearms technology, you can learn all of that from the comfort of your own home. To learn more, head over to sdi.edu. And now, as you guys requested, Patton's Armory. This is a segment where I grab one of my personal guns, and tell you guys about it. This is what I call Project Broadsword. This is the first AR that I ever assembled. It's built on Black Rain Ordnance receivers. These are billet. I had to Dremel out the ejection port because this is chambered in 50 Beowulf. It has a gigantic break to try and tame that recoil. It's got a Todd Jarrett YHM handguard on it because it's different and I love the way it look and this used to have a wooden forend that I broke under shooting. It's a long story. This thing has had some challenges. It's presented me with some challenges. I've got video all over the place. The wood stock and grip are beautiful. I think this is one of the coolest guns that I own. I also have a suppressor for this, and yes, it does work. It's still quite loud, but it's it's cool. And who doesn't love a 50 cal hole in the muzzle? Project Broadsword is a special gun for me because in large part, it was the catalyst for me getting into ARs. I finally started to understand building it, and it was the thing that propelled me forward. I love this gun, I, I really do. So there you have it, Project Broadsword. If you guys enjoyed this little look at my guns and want to see more, let me know in the comments. 
And unfortunately, that is it for this week's show. Guys, you know what to do. If you dislike the video, hit that button. If you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, and consider supporting us via the links in the video description. Be sure to check out our deal of the week over on theguncollective.com. We have an Amazon affiliate store as well as a second YouTube channel called TGC Surplus. Go over there and get subscribed. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.